I'm here at the Cold Lake Hatchery and I'm going to be meeting Mayor Copeland who's going to give us a tour of the hatchery as well as going through the life cycle of the rainbow trout and the tiger trout and of course talking a lot about stock lakes in Alberta. Well, hello, Mayor Copeland. How you doing? Good, how are you? Very good, very good. good. Welcome to Colic Fish Hatchery. Yes. Yeah, you know, we're, yeah, we're, we're usually not, uh, uh, have uh, people like yourself. We're usually, as you can see by the wall, we have usually five and six year olds coming through the hatchery to see what we're doing. Well, I'm sure I'll ask a lot of the same questions as these guys do. Absolutely. <laughs> but you wear a lot of hats. You're not just the mayor of the city of Cold Lake. So tell me about the hatchery. Tell me about um, what all happens here. Yeah, so this is one of four fish hatcheries that the province of Alberta owns. And so the Coley Hatchery is called a production facility. So uh, basically uh, fish come in as little eggs uh, with little eyes. Uh, so we raise rainbow trout, brown trout, brook trout, and tiger trout here at this facility. And the province also owns uh, three, operates uh, three other facilities. Uh, one at, at Calgary, yep. Assembly and Fish Hatchery, uh, Crow's Nest Pass down in uh, uh, that hatchery is called Allison Creek. And then in Caroline, Alberta, uh, the Raven Brew uh, Station. So Calgary and Coal Lake is production hatchery. So between the two hatcheries, we're stocking 2.1 million trout a year. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of fish, and about 120,000 kilos of fish weight. That's incredible. And so, um, one of tell me one of the main reasons why we stock lakes in Alberta with these well, fish. Yeah. So our purpose really is uh, is recreational fisheries. So we're trying to create. Uh, fisheries throughout the province, so we go everywhere. Yeah. Uh, we put on 100,000 kilometers with our trucks wow. each season, yep. and so we go all the way up to Rainbow Lake and all the way down to the southern border of U.S. And so, uh, uh, you know, if uh, typically we stock lakes that do not have any fish species in them, so right. we wouldn't be stocking lakes that would have a yellow perch or a pike or walleye in them. So most of the lakes, uh, we're introducing the fish and creating these fishing opportunities everywhere in Alberta. Close to 300 lakes are stocked throughout Alberta. Wow. And uh, yeah, and about 50% of the lakes we stock do not overwinter. So what that means is we'll put a fish in in the spring, but the lake probably won't carry the fish throughout the, the winter because it just, uh, the lakes are shallow typically and uh, run out of oxygen. Okay, but that, I mean, it's incredible to think that we've just added 300 new lakes that, pe that anglers can fish. And when in the province of Alberta, we're roughly at about 800 lakes. So that's, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah, that's why we, uh, I mean, we've been stocking fish for a long time here in Alberta. And it, you know, we're, you know, in, when you look at Canada, you know, Alberta's probably, you know, in the top three for amount of fish stocked in, in, uh, by the pro provincial. And, uh, you know, it's big business. So for, you know, for every dollar uh, it costs to raise a fish uh, at our hatcheries, uh, there's about a $20 return to the economy because fishermen spend money. Absolutely, we do. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's, um, let's go and have a look at your kind of this, the, how the building works, how the flow works, and, and uh, I want to learn a little more. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, the hatchery is, is kind of unique. It, it's uh, very rare that you actually use lake water. We have a pump house uh, on the shores of Coal Lake and we can bring in 300 liters per second of water from the lake and the water goes through a, a like a big filter, a sand filter, and then in, uh, the water is treated with ozone. So we make our own ozone gas here which, which kills everything in the water. Amazing. Yep. And, and uh, unfortunately the hatchery was built on a lake that has a fish virus called IPN, infectious pancreatic necrosis. Oh. And so the ozone is going to kill that virus in the, in the, in the water. And then the water uh, comes down to the hatchery into the into the mix cell, and then it can go into four different fish rearing areas. Yeah. So the beauty of the hatchery here is we're reusing our water, which is called a partial reuse aquaculture system. So we're bringing back our water to the fish, and they're reusing it. It saves on your utility bill. We're expecting to see our natural gas bill go down big time. Totally it's like magic. having a bath yeah. and uh, filling up your bathtub, but reusing your water every day, <laughs> uh, and only adding five percent fresh. Awesome. There's well, no I, issues there. Yeah, none, none. I don't see any at all. All right, well, let's go see it for real. So I can, I'm so excited about this to learn. And uh, yeah, let's go check out the okay. fish. Bet. So you got to use our imagination here. Uh, the hatchery gets their eggs when they're eyed up. So at the brood stations, they do the fertilization, they make, make the egg, and then the egg lays there and eventually it forms two black eyes. Now it's safe to ship the eggs. The eggs will come up to the hatchery here 
and we'll put about 5,000 eggs in a tray. And two weeks later, they hatch out. They'll have their little yolk sac. So the fish, uh, baby fish will live off that yolk sac for a couple of weeks. Yep. And then eventually they'll be uh, dumped in the trough and put on artificial food. That's and that's amazing. what we're gonna show you next. All right, let's go check it out. All right, so we've gone from the egg tray. Now we're going to put the, the uh, sac fry in here. They'll stay at the bottom for a while. And then as you can see, they start to swim up two weeks later. And then we're gonna put them uh, in, in, down below and put them on artificial food. Amazing. Yeah. All right, and so let's go see the next size. Okay, you bet. Prepare. All right, so we've gone from uh, dumping the fish. Now these fish that we have here are a bit older. They mean they came in as an egg in June, and so you can sort of see the writing rainbow trout. This is the strain of the fish, which is a Campbell Lake by Campbell Lake. Two in means they're diploid, okay. able to have eggs, and the year they're going to be stocked, spring of 2025. So, they're already this size. Yeah, there's 5,000 fish probably in here. These are about uh, seven centimeters and we're just going to reach in this is a kindergarten kid for the day <laughs> and so you're just going to reach in with your hand and the fish do not bite just the workers do <laughs> and then you're just going to put the fish in your hand and and these are the campbell lake uh, rainbows look how beautiful and uh, these are the ones that you caught that's amazing those colors are phenomenal yeah. so we can stock a fish this size or we we uh like we we race Two different sizes kind of in the fall we'll stock some fish this size and let yeah. the lake uh, grow the fish up uh, or you, you stock them in the springtime at like nice 20 centimeters and then the fish will grow like three centimeters a month in a lake that has a lot of food that's amazing yeah that's pretty cool all right you want to see some bigger ones yeah i do okay we got a nice tiger trout here and it's uh about eight months old and uh, that's okay and we'll get another one. And uh, they won't be stocked until the following spring. So <laughs> they'll be about 20 centimeters when we put them in the lake this spring. And they'll start to get some nice colors um, in a couple of more months. They get the nice orange on the males. Yeah. And, uh, but we raise about 70,000 tiger trout a year. Uh, we've, we're up to about 50 lakes that we stock with tiger trout Beautiful. and Little Bear Lake uh, gets a small amount of tigers um, each year, about 2,000. The tiger amazing. trout grow quite slow initially yeah. and um, they don't really start to put a lot of uh, meat and potatoes on them until uh, when they become two and a half, three years of age. Um, They'll get, they get long living, so they'll be eight, nine years old, and they'll, wow. we have them netted in the lakes, uh, 65 centimeters, uh, and that fish is probably going to be six to seven years old. But they they grow here for about 18 months. Yeah, they're inside the hatchery for 18 months. Yeah, that's right. And so the uh, they're really pretty fish. They are. Uh, these are uh, diploids. When we triploid the uh, egg, which means just putting the egg under pressure. We get a higher survival with the tigers, um, but their coloration isn't as bright as the uh, as the diploid. Okay, and then explain, I guess, why or how a tiger trout comes to be, right? Because they, yeah. So that how to make a tiger trout is yeah. we need a brown trout female, and we get a male brookie. So they're both located at the Allison Creek uh, Brood Trout Station, and they both mature um, at the same time. So you just uh, um, you know make your baby fish. Um, lots more, sur uh, less survival. So our aim is to get about 30 to 40 percent survival from egg to stock out okay. with the tigers. A normal fish, a normal brown trout or rainbow trout, we would be wanting to get at least 80 percent. Right, right. That's amazing. Oh, you got two pretty ones. Okay, let's bring them in. He's got two pretty fish. All righty, we got oh, some nice look colors how here. Beautiful. So now, with these guys, are these guys uh, from this year's? Th these are the same as these guys. Yeah. Okay, but they're a triploid, or where did you pull them from? They came out of seventeen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So these are diploids. So um, these are the diploids, and so this is a a, a male a male tiger trout, and uh, that one's. They're so beautiful in yeah. color and. Uh, gorgeous. So this one is about eight months old, 
and uh, a nice male. So males will get the orange, the females will be much more duller in color. Right. Let's see if this guy's gonna cooperate. <laughs> He's got attitude. <laughs> yeah, they're squirmy. Good fishing. <laughs> so you can see why rainbows are really popular to fishermen. They love to come up and eat, eat yeah. you know, bite the hook. You I'm can sure. keep on feeding. So it, it's a percentage of body weight. So we will feed a couple of percentage body weight depending on the water temperature. It determines how much food they get. But uh, we don't want to overfeed uh, the fish because they just uh, will send it out the other end. Oh. And of course that causes uh, water quality issues. Absolutely. That's amazing. Love that. <clears throat> Probably a 21 centimeter fish. Yeah. Uh, you know, so fast growing. Uh, with the with the new water system we have at the hatchery, we're able to grow the fish very fast now. It used to be uh, 12 months to grow a 20 centimeter fish, and now we're doing it in uh, in nine months. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, yesterday I caught a beautiful, big, plump rainbow. <laughs> yeah, those fish, uh, when we stock them at, say, 20 centimeters in, in yeah. May, that fish will be, uh, if the food is really good in the lakes, they'll be about 35 centimeters by the fall. Amazing. And then going into next year, uh, next summer, that fish will probably be in the 40-some-odd centimeter range. They start to get more beefy, Yeah. Um, uh, the rainbows, in year two and year three of their life. But, uh, yeah, these are nice fish. And we're pretty much, um, you know, we're stocked uh, this fall. We did 35,000 kilos of fish weight uh, this fall, which is uh, uh, pretty phenomenal, yeah. Yeah. That's unreal. <clears throat> and how many rainbows did you stock in Little Bear Lake? Well, L Little Bear Lake typically gets 10,000 20 centimeter rainbows uh, and about um, 2,000 uh, uh, brook trout. 2,000 tiger trout on a normal year. Wow. Uh, way back when, we used to stock uh, small trout into uh, Little Bear Lake, like 40,000 a year. Now what we're doing was stocking a bigger fish yeah. uh, and less of them. Right, okay. All right, Craig, so, I mean, obviously you have so many fish here. So tell me how much food it takes to feed this hatchery. Well, you know, if you're if you're a fish, it would be one to one ratio. Oh boy! So if you know, so if I, if I'm 180 pounds, I fed 180 pounds of food to me. Um, it's really quite uh, compared to cattle, very yeah. efficient. So uh, we bring we we stock 55,000 kilos of fish in a year here. Wow. That means we're bringing in you know 60,000 kilos of fish food. It all comes out of Vancouver. Uh, it's big big business. The aquaculture yeah. industry worldwide is phenomenal, yeah. and. Uh, you know, people are eating fish, of course, uh, at the stores, they're buying uh, fish. Yeah. A lot of what's made in the fish food is fish meal. And of course, that is a bit of an issue right now because they're going out in the ocean, trying to catch the anchovies. And what's happening now, it's tough to catch the anchovies. It's driving the fish cost of the fish meal yeah. uh, up. It's a bit of a concern we're having. Uh, we'll see what the future, they're looking at using grain products okay. uh, to maybe replace the fish, so, the fish meal. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's a lot of money, a lot of food, and I'm sure a lot of storage. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Okay. Awesome. Let's go keep going on. All right. So we talked about raising these fish in the hatchery, but then, of course, at some point they have to leave. And so maybe just walk me through what that looks like. Sure. We have people that work through the night. They take the fish from the raceways and then put them on the trucks. We have three big tandem axle trucks right here and then we have a big semi that also hauls for us so on one night the staff will load up every every uh tank that yep. you see uh, the, the people come in hop in the truck and drive to whatever lake uh, their stocking sheet says they go, they're going to yeah um, they keep the fish alive by oxygen so there's right. oxygen uh bubbling through the the water in the tanks when they get to the lake they do water chemistry to make sure that the oxygen's good in the lake the temperature is good the ph is good if everything checks out then they basically, it's really simple. They just put a big hose here and uh, a hose going into the lake and uh, you just pull the gate and it's like a big sl fish slide into the <laughs> lake. And, you know, it, it's funny, but they, they, can, they can do five tanks in 15 minutes Amazing. and the fish will swim across the lake very quickly. Um, they're free and uh, they come out of the water and 
enjoying life and ready to caught. We've had some funny instances where fishermen are fishing right by the hose oh, to yeah. try to catch the fish we're, uh, we're releasing in the water. Oh, that's amazing. And so do you ever do any follow-up once they've been released in the lake, like maybe six months or a year la later? Yeah, we have staff to go around and check the lakes. Maybe they'll do a creel, uh, but we also will go and net the lakes to make mm -hmm. sure that, uh, uh, you know, things are, the fish are growing. We really right. want to concentrate on making sure that the fish are growing properly in a lake because you can actually overstock a lake and they eat, they eat all the groceries in the lake. So right. you, gotta, you do have to be careful. Yeah. But our, our intent, most of the lakes that we stock, if not all of them, the intent is for the fishermen to take if they want to. Right. And that's right. why the fish, the limit is five trout a day on pretty much all of the water bodies. But people should check the regs. Yeah. We do have some lakes that are special. That's fantastic. And like you said, it opens up so many more opportunities, so many more lakes. And um, there is a website that they can go under yeah, my Wild Alberta, when you go to the fishing and look under fish stocking report. Another thing that's beauty about our lakes, a lot of them are you can fish from shore and you don't necessarily have to have a boat. And uh, they're very popular, uh, you know, with not only the, the lakes that we stock, but also lakes that ACA stocks. Uh, some even have docks out onto the lake. And so right. it's a big opportunity for people that, especially new Canadians, to yep. learn how to fish. Yep. Uh, you'll see a lot of them fishing our lakes. That's amazing. Well, I want to thank you so much. It thank is, you for having uh, me. Just, it's been a pleasure. And honestly, like, because I didn't grow up uh, fishing for rainbows or tigers and, and you know, trout really in general, um, yesterday catching the fish, I think today when I go back out this afternoon, I have a whole different appreciation. I really do into what goes into raising these rainbows and especially tiger trout yeah. and just how special that is. Do you want a bag of fish food to take with you? Oh, to chum gosh. the water? Yeah. Can I do that? Am I allowed? <laughs> No, awesome. But no, I really appreciate your time and, right. and letting us know how this all works. Okay, thank you. All right.